Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. Today I'm going to be doing my February wrap up and talk about everything that I read in February. February was such a solid reading month for me. I feel like I've been reading this year, 2021, more than I read in 2020. 2020 was just like a slower reading year for me for some reason and now like the ball is rolling. Like I just want to read everything ever. Like, well, I'm reading more like more romance, which I just feel like helps increase the total amount of books that you're reading. More manga, more just like a lot of different books and I just feel like revitalized. So I'm really excited to talk about everything that I read in February. So stick around and see what I read. The first book I read in February is A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Maas. Now this was a reread for our Akotar along that Maddie and I have been hosting and it's finally done. We had our last live show this past weekend and I'm so sad that it's over but I just had so much fun rereading these books. And the Aquatar series follows Feyre, who is a 19-year-old huntress, and she goes into the woods to hunt for her starving family, and she accidentally murders a creature that is a fae disguised as a wolf, and so in payment, she must go live in the fae lands, and things just escalate from there. It's a whole, whole series I'm sure you've seen, very popular here on booktube, one of my favorite series. And this takes place after the events of A Court of Wings and Ruin, which is the last book in the trilogy, and it kind of bridges the gap over to the next book in the series, A Court of Silver Flames. I ended up giving this book five stars, and I, when I first read it, I gave it five stars automatically. And then I lowered my rating when I saw that like everyone else was giving it low ratings, and I'm like, oh, maybe I do have some issues with it. And now rereading it later, I'm just get back to giving it five stars because I think you have to go into this novel with the right expectations, knowing that it's a like little fluff novella. It's basically like Sarah Jadass is writing fanfiction for her own characters, kind of laying the groundwork for the next few books in the series. So I just kind of enjoyed it for what it was. Like I wasn't expecting too much more out of it. And I enjoyed the fluff that we got and I just thought it was cute. And I didn't really have too many complaints about it. I just, I just was along for the ride and I had fun while I was there. <laughs> then the next few books that I read were the White Hot Kiss Trilogy, I think it's actually called the Dark Elements Trilogy by Jennifer L. Armentrout as part of my Reading JLA vlog series. Please check those videos out on my channel because I've just been having so much fun doing that series and I'm definitely going to continue on very soon. But we have White Hot Kiss, Stone Cold Touch, and Every Last Breath, and then also a prequel novella called Bittersweet Love that I actually read after I finished all three. So I'll start with White Hot Kiss. One kiss can kill. Layla just wants to be a normal teenager, but she can't be because she is half demon, half gargoyle. Because of her parentage, she will suck the soul out of anyone if she kisses them, essentially killing them and leaving them soulless so their soul has nowhere to go. Her longtime crush, Zane, is a warden, aka the gargoyle species that protects against the demons and he treats her like a little sister and then enter Roth a smart mouth the demon who claims to know Layla's deepest darkest secrets and desires though Layla knows that she should stay away she finds it hard when the whole soul eating thing is not an issue trusting Roth could mean betrayal to the warden family that raised her and destroy her relationship with Zane. But with a violent demon uprising looming on the horizon, this kissing may be the least of her problems. I just adored this series. This has the signature JLA style where it's fast paced, the sexual tension is great. I loved the romance between the different characters and there is definitely a bit of a love triangle in this one as well. I think that Layla really struggles with her identity being that she is half demon, half gargoyle. She doesn't really know anything about her parents and also the fact that the two creatures that she's descended from are essentially at war with one another. So she also struggles a lot with trying to understand why the wardens keep her around if she is part demon, which is the species that they're trying to eradicate and send back to hell. I just like really enjoyed this one. It was so quick, fast paced, and I love the conflict with the Lily which is this kind of creature that when created will just go and cause havoc throughout the whole entire world. I love learning about the demon kind as well so this book was five stars. And I did feel like this book concentrated on one love interest and then in the sequel Stone Cold Touch it pivoted and concentrated on Layla's relationship with the other love interest and I think like when there's a love triangle when the author can make me root for either love interest like 
evenly and like I could have gone either way that's when I know that it's like a well done love triangle and I thought that this love triangle was very well done and this one I gave five stars as well again it's just more building on the plot of like the Lilin and this demon causing chaos as well as Layla trying to figure out her identity and her place within the warden world as well as the demon world and it's just full of all the JLA goodness that I've come to love and adore from her. And then we have the conclusion, every last breath. This was such a great conclusion. One thing that I appreciated about this book is that there were two love interests that Layla was torn in between and she pretty much made up her mind very quickly in this novel so we got to kind of also focus on the development of that relationship without the love triangle element so i like that we kind of got to see the relationship beyond the love triangle as well as the repercussions and the falling out for the other love interest and their feelings so i just thought it was very very well done i also thought that we came to a very stunning conclusion with the whole conflict between the lilin and the demons and the wardens and just everyone trying to work together to try and keep the peace and how layla finds herself at the the center of this conflict because of the fact that she's half demon half warden and i loved seeing layla embrace both sides of her also as she becomes more aware of her powers and really grows into herself in this concluding novel so of course five stars oh also we get to go into hell which i just thought that that was just like such a fun sequence and i love that there's also animal familiars like animal demon familiars in this series um and they like manifest as tattoos so like you go get like an animal tattooed on and then like come off your body and be a familiar i love that element as well so this has a spin-off series which is the storm and fury series and i just don't feel like taking it off my shelf right now and so this series has the last book in it coming out in june so i think i'm going to wait until that last book comes out and then binge this in the meantime for my reading jla series i think the next thing that i'm going to be doing is finishing up the luck series and starting on the darkest star series so that will be in the future at some point i think i might hold off like a little bit before i start but i've just been like having so much fun rereading all these books i'm i'm so upset about the cover change for this though like why did we have to have a cover change mid-series so now all my hard covers won't match. Please, that just uh, uh driving me insane. And I do have two more books in the Lux series plus the spin-off novel. But then there, I think there's also another spin-off novel that might be just digital that I need to read as well. So, so like that could be like its own vlog that will happen soon. So this is just me like kind of brainstorming right now. But just know that content is coming in the future, and you will be having JLA content throughout the year as I slowly make my way through her different series. Okay, and then Bittersweet Love is kind of, it's like an introduction to the Gargoyle Warden world, and it's the love story between Dez and Jasmine, and I thought that for the short novella that it was, it did a really good job showcasing their love story, showcasing the Warden's kind of like traditions and views, and I just thought it was very sweet. I don't really rate novellas just because Unless, unless it's something that's like more fully fleshed, like a quart of Frost and Starlight, most of the time I don't find myself rating novellas because I just like don't feel like it's worth it to give them a rating comparing them to a full-blown book. I don't know. So I've just, I'm just very like wishy-washy on whether or not I will give a novella a star rating. So this one I enjoyed, but I'm not going to give it a rating because I don't feel like it. The next book that I read was a reread and that is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Morin and I read this one on audio and the quote on the back says a witch and a witch hunter bound in holy matrimony. There was only one way such a story could end, a stake and a match. But Louise LeBlanc has fled her coven and hidden in the city of Cesarine making it by as a pickpocket. Reed Diggory is part of the order of Chasseurs who have sworn their life in service to the church and eradicating the world of all witches. After a public stunt gone wrong sees Lou and Reed in this very complicated situation in which the only way out is for them to get married and so a witch and a witch hunter enter into holy matrimony and Lou must hide her identity from her husband while also trying to stay hidden from her coven and the powerful witches that are hunting her down for abandoning them. I mean, I gave this book five stars the first time I read it, five stars the second time I read it. I just thought it was absolutely phenomenal. Just the romance and the way that it blossoms between the two is so good. The banter is great. Lou is very much more crude and more like dirty joke-like and kind of has 
has more, I guess, of a rough personality than Reed, and I kind of enjoyed that that trope was like subverted and Lou was like the dirty minded one, uh, whereas Reed was the very innocent one. I really enjoyed seeing that play out. I also just love how they came together and their relationship. It's just so sweet, and really seeing Lou Reed trying to overcome his prejudices when it comes to witches was very well done. I also really enjoyed the audiobook and I thought the French accents were really good. Not that I'm a judge on French accents, but I thought it was done well. Ansel and Coco were also just great side characters and I loved what they added to the story. The sequel, Blood and Honey, was also five stars, but this book had to go in time out after I finished reading it because it literally tore my heart into. This follows the explosive events at the end of Serpent and Dove and we kind of see Lou and Reed in a very, in a, kind of going through their own personal development and dealing with their own personal feelings and it kind of drives them apart a little bit and trying to see them deal with their own feelings I thought was very well done as they were kind of on their own personal journeys. Um, as well as the way that they related to one another. I thought there was a lot of angst and strife between the two of them and it kept things fresh and interesting, especially like when their love, when they already like kind of came together and fell in love in the first book, it's kind of like, how do you keep a relationship fresh in a book? And so I thought that this book did this very well by kind of introducing these own self doubts and kind of seeing them having to get through that separately and together. There was also a lot of cool plot elements with the La, La Dame Rouges and seeing how their magic differ differentiates from the La Dame Blancs. I thought that both magicisms were very inventive um, and there's rarely well-defined rules on how the magic works and how like the magic can take control of the witch. So that was very well done. It's just like so much intrigue. I love the setting of Cesarine and we really got to explore the kingdom more in this. So I thought that that was great and we we're dealing with such like a vicious enemy. Like the, the queen of the witches is just brutal in the way that she hunts them down. And the ending of this book shattered my heart into actual 10 million pieces. Like I can't believe that the events that occurred occurred and I am in shock. I'm so interested to see how the characters are going to deal with the ending of this book because it literally ruined me. The next book that I read is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mass. I'm going to be posting a whole reading vlog on this I think next week so you'll be able to hear my in-depth thoughts then because I did a whole spoiler free section of the vlog and then I did a book talk so I don't want to go too much in depth here but this book follows Nesta after the events in A Court of Wings and Ruin and A Court of Frost and Starlight and kind of how she deals with the fallout of the war and the trauma that she has been through and this book was just everything to me. I just absolutely adored all the relationships in here. Um, because it's finally marketed as adult, Sarah J Mass does not have to resort to innuendos when she writes smut. And so I felt like we finally got the smut that we deserved. Um, and it was very well done just because it was able to be written at that adult level of a romance novel <laughs> instead of toned down a bit. Um, I, as you can see, I have many tabs here. I just think the biggest element of this book is the mental health journey of Nesta and her journey to overcome what has been plaguing her mentally is just so, so gorgeous and beautiful. I have to give this book like 5 million stars out of 5 million, definitely a new favorite. I just loved everything about it and I'm so excited to continue on with the series because it's just, it's just everything to me. Please check out my vlog when it is out for more of my in-depth thoughts because like I said, I don't want to go too much in-depth here when I already have a whole other video on the way. After I finished A Court of Silver Flames, I needed something completely different, not fantasy. So I decided to read Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I just wanted a cute little rom-com and this was everything that I was hoping for. So Chloe Brown is a chronically ill computer geek and after a near-death experience, she makes a list to get a life which includes enjoy a drunken night out, ride a motorcycle, go camping, have meaningless but thoroughly enjoyable sex, travel the world with nothing but hand luggage, and do something bad. And it's not easy to be bad when you have your list handwritten step by step, and what Chloe needs is a teacher, which she has found in her building's handyman named Red Morgan. And he has a motorcycle, tattoos, and more sex appeal than 10,000 Hollywood heartthrobs. And he's an artist who paints at night and hides his work in the light of day. So she enlists Red on her mission to rebel and 
thus these two characters come to learn about one another and this was just so sweet i gave this five stars i thought the romance between these two was so well done and i love the exploration of what it means to live with a chronic illness i thought that that representation was done very well um as well as kind of like dealing with the repercussions from a past toxic relationship because red has to deal with a lot of that from his past relationship and seeing these two characters kind of like deal with their own traumas and come together and form this beautiful romance it was just so sweet and everything that i could have hoped for i absolutely just adored this one so much i thought it was just amazing and i can't wait to continue on with the brown sisters trilogy because i've just heard amazing amazing things and if you're looking for like just a cute sweet rom-com that you will fly through and absolutely adore i totally recommend picking up get a life chloe brown next i read a manga which is the promised neverland volume 2 and this is about a group of children that is living at a home for orphans and they have everything they could ever want and they are cared for by a mom who is the like leader at this orphanage and cares for the children as if they were her own but after some events in the first novel they find out the truth of why they are really there and it is so dark and twisted and so in this volume we see the characters like continue to kind of cope with that knowledge and formulate a plan and this manga is just so good i saw that there is an anime and i think it covers the first four volumes of this manga so i definitely want to read them and then watch the anime i'm continuing on with the series in march and i just love it it's just so intriguing and so dark and twisted and it's going places that i did not think that it would go so i highly recommend checking this out if you like like dark twisted suspenseful mangas and finally the last book i read in march is phoenix flame by sarah holland which is the sequel to havenfall which i read an arc for last year havenfall is an inn that is at the crossroads of many different worlds and maddie morrow is set to be the heir of this inn after her brother was murdered as a child and her mother is in jail she's kind of like this outcast and so she looks forward to every summer when she gets to go to this inn and she gets to see her friend brecken who's like she's had feelings for since she was like a child and he's from another world um and as well as she also develops a crush on taya which is one of the new staff for the summer and there's romance between them and basically like when everything at the inn starts to go wrong and her uncle who is the innkeeper falls ill all the responsibility falls on maddie and she must kind of keep everything together and keep all these delegates happy from all these different worlds i loved the first one but unfortunately i gave this second one three stars which is still a good rating but there were a few elements where i felt like it fell flat and it just made me so sad i love that we got to actually go to the different worlds and explore them i loved the world building i feel like that is an area where holland like really excels but what fell flat for me is the development of the characters and their relationships and also the plot like it was just so rushed and i felt like there was no like actual resolution bet between like the characters and i felt like it was just left like too open-ended like i did enjoy the mission that they went on this on but it felt like they like went there and then like things were just resolved so quickly and i felt like we got so much built up in the first book and then the second one didn't fully deliver and i don't know there was a love triangle in the first book and in this book and i just hated how open-ended it was left and there was just like no resolution as well as there was not like a lot of resolution to the plot there's so many open ends and this is supposed to be a duology like i don't think that the series is continuing so like it wrapped up but it felt like it didn't really wrap up so that was why it was three stars with that that is everything that i read in february i'm just feeling so good about reading this year and i just feel like i'm really getting my groove back for reading so yeah, let me know if you've read any of these books below or what you read in february leave a heart if you have watched this far in the video and have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one